Cypher here. I'm sure all of my viewers, no matter what nation you're from, have been keenly aware of what's going on over here in America during this election season. One of the main sticking points for Donald Trump's campaign is his constant talk of building a wall between us and Mexico. Now there's been a lot of talk about the efficacy of building a wall, mostly about the economics of doing so and the diplomatic fallout of doing such a thing. There is no way that Mexico can pay a wall like that. But I think the pundits and the politicians are missing the most important thing in terms of border walls and their effectiveness. And that is the history of whether or not previous border walls have been effective or not. But of course that would require research. But that's why I'm here. So here's a top 10 list of border walls throughout time and their effectiveness. As a side note, this list is necessarily arbitrary. One has to first define what a wall is, second, know all walls that have ever been made, and third, choose a way of excluding walls that aren't for borders. So this is obviously not definitive, but it is a significant way to show the effectiveness of border walls. Starting us off at number 10, we're going back nearly 2,000 years to the third dynasty of Ur, one of the many dynasties of the first civilization in history, the Sumerians. But they dealt with the same problems that any other empire deals with, mainly being able to control wide patches of territory and the western tribes of their empire called the Amorites revolted against the emperor named Shusin. So he had a wall built from the Tigris to the Euphrates in 1960 BC, yet 1960 before Christ. And of course the whole idea was to keep the revolt from crossing that border. It didn't work of course and the Amorites overthrew that wall in only a couple of years. This wall was 140 miles, or 225 kilometers, and these walls are only going to get longer from here. Offa's Dyke is kind of a weird one. We actually don't know that much about it. Despite its name, it probably wasn't created by Offa. Archaeological evidence shows that it probably predates him. But in either case, it is between the borders of the medieval kingdoms of Mercia and Powys, which are now between England and Wales. It runs 176 miles or 280 kilometers, and was most likely meant for demarcation, and is definitely not defensible. It's pretty much just a mound and a ditch. There are theories about it being built by the Romans, but in either case, there's a lot of debate about it, and it never functioned as much more than demarcation. At number 8, we have Chiao Jiangsong. Now this might actually refer to two separate walls, so I'm just going to include both of these under number 8. They're actually both roughly the same distance, somewhere around 300 miles, or 480 kilometers. The first was built in 631 AD. It was mostly a bunch of forts to keep out the Tang Dynasty, who had been making incursions into Korea at that point in time, but it was quickly abandoned because of trade agreements. The second was built in 1044, and it was meant to keep out northern barbarians, especially the Jurchen people, who would later morph into the Manchus, and it seems like this wall might have been fairly effective for a short period of time, though there's no real evidence to show this. But in either case, the wall was abandoned for further expansion and even made obsolete by the Mongol invasion of China. It's hard to ascertain these walls' effectiveness because they were both basically abandoned rather quickly. They're building a wall. So this one is actually fairly recent, as in within the last two decades. Now the Israelis and the Palestinians duke it out every once in a while on a near constant basis. So the Israelis started building a wall around the Palestinians. It currently runs 440 miles, or 675 kilometers, both around the West Bank and Gaza. And they're planning on adding an extra 30 miles to West Bank. This has actually been highly effective. Since these walls have gone up, suicide bombings have gone tremendously down and typically come from different areas. 
Of course, terrorists just simply reroute through Jordan. Israel is of course trying to create border fences between them and Jordan, but this has been longer to take effect, and they're mostly fences rather than walls. I chose to exclude fences since they're kind of hazily defined. But in terms of stopping suicide bombing, it has worked tremendously well, but at a very heavy cost. Warfare has changed between Israel and Palestine and now works primarily with airborne weapons, such as rockets. There's also a lot of tunneling under these walls, which is fairly hard to fight against. Egypt itself has actually started trying to create walls that would stop the tunneling, and actually engage in water warfare where they flood tunnels. It is completely a mess, let alone the toll it has taken on the Palestinians, who now suffer because of the border between them and who would be their most significant trade partner. They're building a wall. And at such a cost, land, money, and safety, and all the lives lost. Coming in at number six, we have the Baltic Way, and it is a very different kind of wall. It was the longest human chain in history, and it was meant to form a symbolic barrier. On August 23rd of 1989, citizens of the Baltic states formed a human chain for 420 miles, which is 675 kilometers, through the middle of the Baltic states, which are Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. This symbolic wall was meant to show solidarity on the part of the Baltic states against the Soviet Union. And because of their patriotism shown on this day, they were the first states to fall out of the Warsaw Pact. The fall of communism began with these people just holding hands. There was no violence associated with it, and it went off splendidly. Sitting at number 5, we have the Serpent's Wall, also known as Trajan's Wall. These are miles of earthen walls in Ukraine without any known purpose or precise dating. It is often assumed to be Roman, hence Trajan, but that is probably incorrect since there is archaeological evidence pointing to the contrary. We have no evidence to show that these walls were of any use to anyone since they never formed the borders to any lasting empire. But many archaeologists assume that these walls were part of a competitive measure between various tribes in the area at the time. But they were constantly duking it out, and probably these were completely ineffectual. The total distance of these walls is estimated to be around a thousand miles or 1600 kilometers. At number four, we have the Moroccan Wall. It forms a border in the disputed territory of Western Sahara. Morocco controls most of that area, but West Saharan nationalists control the eastern portion. So the Moroccans started building a very extensive wall that runs about 1,700 miles or 2,700 kilometers, demarcating the difference in controlled territory. The project was began in 1982 and completed in 1987. It is heavily mined and militarized and built mostly out of sand, so it's kind of like a long berm. So one could think of it like a deadly version of the no-touching boundary between the US and Canada, but in the middle of the desert, and on land that is technically not an actual border, but forms a real border because nobody wants to get blown up as they cross it. So this wall has actually been highly effective in creating this difference in control, but mostly because of people not wanting to get killed. It also makes it so that the West Saharan nationalists control the least useful territory in the east, which is pretty much nothing but uninhabited sand dunes. It also costs Morocco a great deal to keep on manning this wall. For number three, we have the Inland Customs Line of India. It also goes by the name of the Great Hedge. It was originally built in 1843, and it ran for 2,500 miles, or 4,000 kilometers. 
and it was mostly set up to be able to collect salt tax for people coming into India. It was originally just a bunch of custom houses, but then they started building a fence. And then nature kind of took over, and it became more and more of a hedge. It was extremely hard to enforce, and they had to employ at least 14,000 staff members to be able to man this wall and keep on collecting tax. It was originally meant to form a border between different Indian states, some of which were under direct British rule, and others under the system of the British Raj. But after the Indian Rebellion of 1857, the Raj was passed on from the British Indian Company into direct rule, and so these borders had less and less significance. So the Inland Customs Line became obsolete, and it was eventually abandoned in 1879. Yep, you saw it right, the Great Wall of China is number two. We'll get to why that is with number one, but let's talk about the Great Wall. First of all, there's not just one Great Wall of China, there are many. Some of them meet, some of them are branches off of each other, some of them are completely separate. But we can call them all one Great Wall. The first one was built as early as the 7th century BC. They were constructed and abandoned over and over again for centuries, not being completed until the 17th century. Depending on what archaeological evidence you go with, they could all be a total of 5,500 miles, or 8,850 kilometers, or as long as 13,000 miles or 21,000 kilometers. Now 5,500 miles or 13,000 miles seems like a pretty huge difference, but a lot of these walls have been destroyed over the years. The original ones were meant to keep one dynasty that was fighting another separate, sometimes even used as siege tactics. But later they became more and more used to keep out northern barbarians. Those Jushins that we talked about before were one of the enemies that they tried to keep out, and then the Mongols. Although, it is interesting to note that the Huns, as in the Huns who would eventually be led by Attila the Hun, might have been one of the earliest barbarians that they had to keep out. Those guys will come up again, by the way. But as you might remember, the Mongols and the Jushins ended up taking over good chunks of China. First the Jurchens came in, then the Mongols, and ultimately the Manchus invaded. You know how I said that the wall was completed in the 17th century? Well, it was supposed to stop the Manchus from invading Ming China, but they failed miserably. And so the Ming were taken over by another dynasty that were called the Qing, and they ruled all the way until the revolution of 1911. So yeah, the Great Wall of China is a magnificent engineering feat, but it completely lacks practicality. So number one is probably longer than the Great Wall of China, but we just don't know because most of it has been destroyed. It is the Roman Limes. This was a huge amount of fortification. The Romans loved building stuff. In Great Britain alone, there were two separate limes. Most of you have probably heard of Hadrian's Wall. It was one of the two, the other one being the Antonine Wall. The Antonine Wall fell pretty quickly, but Hadrian's Wall seems to have done well. But Rome's main focus was not on Britain. Britain was very far outside of their consideration. In fact, it was one of the first places that they pulled out of as they started getting invaded by more and more barbarians. No, the Lime system was not just Britain, it was throughout the empire. That's right, one of the largest empires with one of the most crazy land borders ever created had huge walls built throughout their empire. Some of these walls weren't really much of walls, they were just kind of forts built in parallel to each other so that they could maintain eye contact and make sure that barbarians wouldn't cross those borders. This was a gargantuan project, and there were limes throughout the empire even separating different regions. And while Hadrian's Wall is definitely the best preserved and most famous, it certainly wasn't the longest. In fact, it wasn't even the longest in Britannia. But probably the longest of these limes was the Limes Tripolitanus. There were long walls, as in walls where they're covering just a singular passage that went for miles and miles and miles, and all of it basically against the desert. Not the kind of Roman fortification that you think of very often, but probably the most important Lime was the Limes Germanicus. 
specifically meant to keep out German barbarians. Well, for those who know Roman history, they're probably chuckling to themselves because the Romans were besieged by German barbarians towards the end and was basically part of what brought down the entire empire. The failure of these limes was what led to the empire falling. Of course, there's a whole bunch of stuff in terms of what caused these things to fail, let alone the fact that they needed to stop this in the first place. So there's a lot more to the fall of Rome than simply not having adequate fortifications. But their fortifications did fail to keep out the German barbarians. So yeah, the greatest and most extensive network of walls ever in the history of the world were complete failures, and their failure led to Rome falling. Now, I'm by no means an expert in ancient history, so I won't say what they could have done to do this, whether it meant fortifying their borders even more and making the wall that was already pretty much the greatest wall in human history even more extensive, or simply figure out another tact in order to deal with their enormous empire. Funny enough, towards the end of the Roman Empire, when they were dealing with the Saxon invasions of Britannia, they also built walls as border walls along the English Channel. That certainly didn't work well either. So yeah, greatest wall in human history, completely ineffective. And most of it doesn't even exist anymore. That's why we have no estimate as to how long these limes actually were. Well, I think I detect a bit of a pattern among all of these. Really long barriers only work under very particular conditions. But those conditions are probably not what is part of the rhetoric in all of this wall building stuff that is going on with the Trump campaign. We're going to build a wall. It's going to be built. You see, the only way long barriers actually work is if we're willing to kill a lot of people. Lethality is what makes these barriers work. It also takes a lot of money, a lot of work, and just an inordinate amount of people. To illustrate this point, there's one barrier that I did not include on this list. The US-Mexico border fence. We already have 580 miles or 935 kilometers of fence between the US and Mexico. It works so well that we need to build more apparently. No, in terms of the ones that have worked the best in this list, that were border walls between people and were not symbolic, were extremely deadly. Specifically, the Israeli-Palestine barrier and the Moroccan wall. Yet, they're only effective because they're lethally enforced. Now, given the immunity that the Trump campaign has in terms of stupid statements... I always wanted to get the Purple Heart. This was much easier. Poor guy, you gotta see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said, ah! Oh. But you're invoking his race when talking about whether I'm or saying. not he can do his job. Jake, I'm building a wall. I don't know how they would fare with this, but I think that we might want to reconsider the rhetoric when suddenly it involves a lot of killing. 